Hi, this is Aaron. I'm just here to answer some questions about background images in Rhino and background images for rendering. I thought I'd start with uh, just setting an image behind the model view. Um, this model is of a Denari building in New York City, but we're going to pretend like it's in Seattle for the sake of this exercise. And so I'm going to start by going into Chrome and just searching for uh, downtown Seattle images. I wanted to go through this just to stress the idea that uh, when you are picking a background for your render, it needs to be the full size that the render will be printed or uh, you know appear at digitally. So it's a good opportunity to use this larger than feature over here in the image search. So I'm going to go into larger than two me megapixels. Up top, you see now that we have that as a filter for our images, and I'm just going to choose one of these guys that's kind of at a low street level. Um, clearly, if you have your own photos, it's a lot easier and you can be very specific about it. I'm going to grab this one here, conveniently from Wikipedia. Full size image. And then I'm just going to take this image and drag it onto my desktop. And then from the desktop, let's see if I can show you guys this, I can take it and just drag it right into the model window. And you'll see Rhino pops up some options. Uh, picture frame, wallpaper, environment, texture palette. So if we choose wallpaper, let's say OK to that. Then it just immediately loads that bitmap behind the whole scene. This can be a little confusing, of course, because here you can see we can spin the model around, but the image behind it doesn't spin around. But if you have a specific view that you're trying to line up to, this is pretty handy. Also, of course, what you can do here is you can change the aspect ratio of your viewport to match the background image. Um, if you want to control that background image, you just go into the viewport properties, which I know is not currently visible, but viewport properties, and uh, you see there's show wallpaper show as grayscale. So I'm going to turn off grayscale, and then I have that full color image behind there. If I turn into a rendered view, that kind of more honestly portrays what aspects of that background I can see and not see. Of course, this is important to think about as you're trying to set up your view because you could theoretically completely obliterate the view behind the camera. Um, this, although cool, is really only useful for screenshots. Um, if we're using Maxwell, which uh, generally we are, um, it makes more sense to think about the image after the fact. So how that would work is if I were to make a quick rendering of this, and I'm just going to do a little Maxwell Fire here just to check to make sure that it's going to render it all. So there we go, rendering into view. Um, kind of weird, kind of ghosty. But you notice the background doesn't show up back there. So if I wanted to see that background, I would have to uh, put it in after the fact. So Maxwell uh, has an alpha channel that allows you to do this really easily. You just need to make sure it's turned on when you go to render. So uh, I'm going to actually Maybe I'll just open up the scene manager and at least put on the sun just so that we get some sense of similarity between the background image and the rendered image. That happens, of course, in the environment tab. And I'll just switch to physical sky and turn the sun on. And if you noticed in our background image, the light seems to be coming from sort of behind the camera. Uh, that surface is lit, so if we spin the sun around a little bit, we should be able to get a sort of vaguely similar match like that. And 
Now at least those two things seem to have something to do with each other, although that surface is shaded, so it might make sense to rotate it back a little bit. Again, not a production rendering, but always good to think about light when you can. Okay, so that looks great. I'm going to stick with that. Close this down. Now, if I save out this image, if I just hit save here, I'll get that background and cutting that out in Photoshop would be not too bad, but not super, super easy. So let's do something super, super easy. We'll go into the scene manager and go under this output tab and scroll down and just make sure that we have alpha turned on. Also, just it's my policy to keep the material and the object ID, ID turned on when rendering. And just make sure that you append the camera name and auto name these things. It'll just make it much simpler and reduce the chance of you accidentally deleting something you love. Um, so back in here, I'm just going to set the view. It might make sense, you know, who knows, maybe the context shouldn't even be on for this render. But just roughly getting the view so that there's some parity. It's pretty low angle. Turn that context back on. Maybe what we'll do is we'll just get rid of the context buildings and leave the high line there. Perfect. So it's great. We love it. Um, again, there's this question of aspect ratio. I think it's usually a good policy to try to just match them when you can. Um, again, it's less to work out and it'll be more predictable when you open it up in, in Maxwell. Um, that purple is showing me that I'm a little off. To be more specific about this, of course, I can go into the viewport settings and change the height, make it 540, maybe 541, <laughs> 542, how about that? Great. Um, and then I'm just going to go up into here and rendering next port, hit render. Do a little cooking show move. So we got Maxwell opening up here, and you'll notice that now instead of as the fire window showed us, we had that um, gradient blue of the physical sky that's been replaced by black. And that black is the alpha channel. That alpha channel represents everything that's transparent, where there, there is no object in the scene. Um, to see that acutely, you can click on that over, mouse over that alpha button on the bottom left of the render screen. And then, of course, here's our material ID and our object ID. So I'm not going to let that go too long, um, but of course I can already get to it if I need to. So um, I'm going to go it's in this Dropbox folder here. Here it is, and I'm just going to open it up with Photoshop. All right, so I got this thing open in Photoshop. You'll notice the background comes in black, but uh, I can easily cut this out using the alpha mask. So back here in our output folder, I'm just going to drag this alpha. And all I'm going to do is just control A and select everything on that layer. Then click on layer zero where my rendering is. Add a layer mask. Alt click that mask. That means I'm just looking at the mask and not the rendering. And then do control V and copy in this uh, alpha cutout. And then if I click back on the, on the uh, image itself and turn off that alpha, you'll see now that it's cut out. And it's a perfect cutout. So now, if I want to drop an image behind there, this is easy, right? I just take that same image, that downtown Seattle image, and I just drag it in, scale it up, and 
and you'll notice the aspect ratio is dead on. Click enter, and then I'll drag it behind the rendering, and there it is. Perfect background. So, unlike HGRIs, you know, you can't light scenes with JPEGs. So if we go back into Rhino, you know, this scene isn't doing anything to light the, the world of my render. Um, if that's not important to you, then this is probably the easiest and, and most direct way to get a nice, clean, and relevant render background for Maxwell. Hope that helped.